All right, so last time we said that uh, you can calculate the standard entropy by simply uh, using heat capacity data and enthalpy of transition. And it's basically the delta S in going from 0 Kelvin to 298 Kelvin. OK, so what we did for nitrogen, for example, is to calculate the standard entropy at 298 Kelvin, which is given here, 191.6 joules per Kelvin per mole. You use the divide extrapolation to 0 Kelvin. So integrate Cp over T dt from 0 to the smallest temperature, the lowest temperature that you can go down to to measure heat capacity. And then here you have your solid. You heated it, okay, as far as you can. And in this particular case for nitrogen, it undergoes a phase transition to another solid form at 35.61 Kelvin. So integral of Cp dt from 10 Kelvin to 35.61. And then you add delta S for the phase transition at 35.61 Kelvin, okay? Which is in this particular case where it's changing from one solid form to another. And then here you have integral of Cp dt again from 35.61 Kelvin all the way to its melting point, which is 63.15 Kelvin. And then the next number right here is delta H fusion divided by the temperature at which melting occurs. So that's delta, that would be your delta S for the melting. Right? And so all of these things you can measure from, uh, you can deter, calculate from measurements of heat capacity versus temperature and the delta H for phase transitions. Okay? And so can go all the way down, all the way up to 298 Kelvin. If it happens to be a gas at 298 Kelvin, then you have to add one extra term there in your calculation. And that is the delta S in changing the gas from a real gas at one bar to an ideal gas at one bar. So that's a pro that last step, you, you have to imagine doing that process to get to the tabulated values of your uh, absolute entropy or standard entropy. Okay, so let's see how we can do that non-correction for non-ideal behavior. And so in the case of nitrogen, that last step, you have to imagine your nitrogen is a gas, it's real, it's at one bar, it's at 298.15 Kelvin. Imagine changing that into an ideal gas, also at one bar at 298 Kelvin. What's the delta S for that? And the way we do that is we imagine, first of all, Okay, so that, this is what we want to start with, right? Nitrogen real at one bar. Imagine changing that gas, okay, by lowering its pressure to a pressure low enough so that it's behaving ideally. So this low pressure here that we pick, we pick a very low pressure, very close to zero, where it's behaving ideally, and you need to calculate the delta S for that. So it's going from one bar so this is an isothermal change from one bar to very low pressure. And then, now that we're at very low pressure, okay, the nitrogen gas is the same thing as an ideal gas. So what's the delta S for this second step right here? It's going to be zero. Okay. So at very low pressure, your nitrogen gas is behaving ideally. So if you imagine now your nitrogen changes into an ideal gas at that very low pressure, delta S for that is zero. Then step three, you now have an ideal gas at that low pressure. Bring it back up to one bar. Okay, so delta S for step three, you're, going, you're doing low pressure ideal gas to one bar pressure. So how are we going to do this? We use the Maxwell relation from our express, our fundamental e equation in, in the Gibbs energy representation. Okay, so we say dG, if you remember, dG is negative S dT plus V dP. What's the Maxwell relation you can get from this? Partial derivative of S with respect to P, okay? That's useful because what do we want? We want to change, we want to calculate delta S when pressure changes is equal to partial derivative of V with respect to T. And there's a negative sign there, so that's negative of partial derivative of V with respect to T. So we have down here, 
Let me rewrite that. Partial derivative of S with respect to P at constant T is equal to ne negative partial of V with respect to T at constant pressure. So how do we get delta S then? Delta S. I want to change pressure, so I want to go from what? Let's look at delta S for step one. I want to go from one bar to low pressure, okay? Of what's my part? What's my what's my variable that's changing? Pressure. What partial derivative goes here? Partial S with respect to P, and this is isothermal, not 298 Kelvin, okay? So I can rewrite this using my Maxwell relation. This is just that, which is just that, right? So this is going to be negative partial derivative of volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure, dp from one bar. I'm just going to start calling one bar p naught, okay? One bar is p naught. So from p naught to p low, I'm just going to say p sub l. And then what's the delta S for step three? Integral from low pressure, P sub L to P naught of, again, the same thing, partial of V, negative partial of V with respect to T at constant P, dP. Right? I can combine delta S1 plus delta S3. What do I get? The total delta S correction that I have to make would be delta S1 plus delta S2 plus delta S3. Delta S2 is zero, right? So I combine the integrals. How can I combine these two integrals? They both have dp. Can I just put them together? I have to switch limits for one of them, right? So which one do you want to switch? Switch the first huh? Let's switch the first one. Okay. So from P low to because I'm that P low, I can just make that zero later. So zero to P sub L. So you go from zero to high pressure. So I'm gonna switch that one. So zero to P naught. So from P low to P naught of so if I switch this one, I have to make this one this derivative positive, right? So positive dv dt constant p. This is for the real gas. I'm going to put an r there. Minus partial derivative of v with respect to t at constant pressure. This is for an ideal gas. I'm going to put an i for that one. That's an ideal gas, right? In step three, we're dealing with an ideal gas, okay? And in step one, we're dealing with a real gas. So what would this give me? Integral from P low to P naught, partial of V real minus V ideal with respect to T at constant pressure. What is V real minus V ideal? You go back, so here's the expression right here, partial of V real minus V ideal from low P to P naught. What is V ideal minus, uh, what is V real? V real is just, if you remember, compression factor is V over V ideal, right? So Z times V ideal is V, right? So this volume right here is Z times V ideal. So Z times V ideal minus V ideal, what can I do here? I can factor out V ideal. So I can say that's V ideal times Z minus 1, right? Z minus 1. And I'm approximating it, okay? I'm just going to say, okay, at low enough pressure, at one atmosphere, probably I don't need to go beyond the first second virial coefficient. So I'm going to say my Z is just 1 plus B prime P. Alright, so that gives me an expression that says, 
Okay, V ideal is just what? For one mole, volume is N R T over P, right? So for one mole, V ideal is just R T over P. And one here cancels out. That just B prime times P. Okay. And that turns out to just be the second variable coefficient, B. Okay. So your P cancels out. And B prime times RT is just P. Remember your se second variable coefficient, you can write it as 1 plus B over B sub M. And B and B prime are related. B prime times RT is P. Okay? So instead of V minus V ideal here, I'm going to put here just B. B, B, D, T, a constant P. Where B is your know, how... So this tells you how your second variable coefficient changes with temperature. So if you integrate that, that's approximately equal to, okay, if I assume that's more or less constant, I can pull it out my integral, that's dB dt times P minus the low pressure would be zero, okay? So I can, I can take the limit as your low pressure approaches zero. So that's just dB dt times P naught. So that's your, that is what you need to look up then, okay? What you need to do is look up the second variable coefficient. Look that up. See how that depends on temperature. And then take dBdt at, at, two, at, at the pressure of one bar, okay? And then multiply that by P naught. That would be that would give you your correction term for your non-ideal behavior. And if you did that, okay, you would find this is the value from Aquarius and Simon. So it's 0.192 times 10 to the negative third liters per mole per Kelvin times P naught. This is not. This should not be. This should just be one bar. Okay. If it was one atmosphere, if our P naught was one atmosphere, then it would be 1.0132. So that should just be one bar. So this is 0 0.019 joules. And that's where that 0 0.02 came from. Okay? Now, how do you get uh, your second virial coefficient? You have to look that up. Where can you look up that number? Back of your textbook or uh, there is um, on the internet, in the UK, I think they have the Labby K. Oops, where are we? www.klabby.npl.uk. Right, if you go to the table of contents, there's a chemistry right there, and you can look at critical constants and second variable coefficients of gases. You go there, and where is it? Critical constants and second real coefficients of gases. Here you have uh, an expression for B. Okay? It's a function of temperature. Second real coefficient as a function of temperature. But uh, keep, it, uh, keep an eye on this one. Be alert to that one. That's cubic centimeters. So that's milliliters per mole. Okay? So just to make sure your units are consistent. Now, these constants A, B, and C are tabulated for various gases down here, okay? So, for example, for nitrogen, what is it? Nitrogen right here, the constants A, B, and C right here, A, B, and C. Those are the coefficients for your uh, viral equation. The dependence of the second viral coefficient on temperature. And if you look up the values for nitrogen, there it is. So it's 185.4 is the value for A, 141.8 for B, and 88.7 for C. So you just plug, it, plug that into your expression. Okay, and you can get the derivative of B with respect to temperature at uh, one bar pressure. Okay? So, that correction factor there is 0.0 correction term. Now, 
how do you get entropy changes for reactions at constant temperature? This is uh, pretty much a review of your freshman chemistry. If you have a reaction, you, you've learned how to calculate delta S for the reaction. It's just absolute entropy or standard entropy of products minus standard entropy of the reactants. Where does that come from? Now, uh, delta S for a reaction is not just equal to delta H over T. Okay? It's not equal because if you're going from separated reactants to separated products, okay, if you measure the delta H for that, okay, that if that reaction occurs, then you're not going to get, that's not going to be a reversible process. So you have to imagine a reversible process in going from reactants to products. So what you do is you imagine taking your reactants down to zero Kelvin. So start with reactants at 298 Kelvin, take them down, cool them down to zero Kelvin. What's delta S for this one? This will just be the negative of the absolute entropy of the reactants, right? That's just the reverse of taking the, the reactants from 0 Kelvin to 298. Now imagine ha your reaction happening at 0 Kelvin. What's the delta S for that second step? 0. Why is that 0? That's your third law of thermodynamics, right? All entropies approach the same value at 0 Kelvin. So delta S at 0 Kelvin would be 0 for any reaction. And then finally, once, now imagine that you already have your products at zero Kelvin, reversibly heat those products back to 298 Kelvin. And so delta S for step three would just be the entropy of your products. So delta S for the reaction is just negative entropy of reactants plus entropy of products, standard entropies of reactants and standard entropies of products. Okay, so products minus reactants. That's the formula you learn in your freshman chemistry. What if you want the delta S for temperatures other than 298 Kelvin? Then what you have to do is bring your reactants, okay, at temperature T to reactants at 298 Kelvin. What would be the delta S for that one? It's just going to be integral of Cp dt over T from whatever temperature you're interested in to 298 Kelvin, okay? And to avoid confusion, we're going to put a prime on our T, since that's just a dummy variable there, right? And then what do you do next? Imagine the reaction happening at 298 Kelvin. What's delta S for step two? Standard entropy of products minus standard entropy of reactants. Remember, the numbers that you look up, those are numbers at 298 Kelvin. And then finally, what do you do with your products? Cool them back or heat them back to the original temperature of your reactant. So what's the delta S for step three? It's just going to be integral of Cp dt over T from 298 to whatever temperature you're interested in. So I'm going to make put a prime on my T there just to make to emphasize that that's the dummy variable. You have you're doing a definite integral, right? Okay. And what is this CP right here? This is CP of the reactants. And the CP that you plug in here would be the CP of the, the capacity of your products. Okay. So that's how you get the standard entropy of reaction for reactions at temperatures other than 298 Kelvin. So this is similar to what we did for delta H. Okay. This takes into account the fact that, takes advantage of the fact that entropy is a state function, just like enthalpy. So that's the end of the third law presentation.